All right, guys, happy draft day. I hope you are as excited as I am. I mean, um, this team is being reshaped right now. So it's a lot of new faces we got last year on defense, and we're going to get a lot. We got 10 picks this year. So we're going to get a lot of new faces on our team this year, and we're going to be a very young um, football team. We don't know about our coach. You know, we may lose our coach. <laughs> but uh, what, what we do know about is our talent, because once we draft you and give you a contract, you're going to be a cowboy, you know, unless we trade you, which is not, not, not that often. So um, today we have, like I said, we have 10 picks, and I have a breakdown of where I want the picks to go. Um, but before I want to get in that, just the overall thing, with, with the, with the, especially the top of the draft, these quarterbacks need to go. They need to go early so it can push talent down to us. Now, one thing that can help us out a lot at the top of the draft is the Cleveland Browns picking Saquon Barkley. I don't know what's going on. It, 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 it baffles me when you have um, four quarterbacks that are pretty much even. You can't tell what's the difference between those quarterbacks and they, everybody's got one of those four as, as their best or whatever. That you don't get Saquon Barkley, force Chubb on the Giants, or the, for the Giants, or they may, may make a trade or whatever, but in my uh, interest, keep Saquon Bar Barkley out of New York. But take Saquon Barkley, let New York get a, a quarterback if they have to, or Chubb or whatever, and then that would leave you, what, Two out of the four at worst case scenario if they don't if they take a quarterback But if they take Chubb it leaves the, the Browns three out of the four quarterbacks left With Saquon Barkley is that quarterback the Browns want so bad that much better that you're gonna Sacrifice the best player in this draft if they do it I'm telling you it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen Cleveland do and we've seen Cleveland do some dumb things But if they let Saquon Barkley drop to the Giants is straight stupidity straight stupidity no if ands and buts okay I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop but when you come to the live stream tonight I'm probably gonna be ranting about that until the draft happens that the Cleveland Browns better get Saquon Barkley and then pick up a freaking quarterback you idiots all right <laughs> all right now I have a breakdown of how I want our positioning to go in in, in the draft as far as what positions I will be looking um, for the draft in whatever rounds. So here's my breakdown. I do want a quarterback. Uh, I want to draft a quarterback. I don't like Cooper Rush um, uh, as a backup. I, I, I want to have someone that's going to be better than Cooper Rush that can actually push that. You know what I'm saying? I always wanted that for Romo. I never got that from Romo. I want a quarterback right behind Dak breathing on his neck, just like breathing on him like that. Whatever. That's, that, that's the competition thing in me that I love, and, you'll, and I'll, I'll bring it up again in just a minute. Uh, the running back, you know me if you've been uh, was, was in, watching my videos last year. I want a number two good, good, solid running back to go with Zeke. So if we lose Zeke, if Zeke hurts, We've got another young guy that can take it to the house that 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 you won't have to. Uh, for, for instance, Alfred Morris, they were not afraid of Alfred Morris last year. They let Alfred Morris get what Alfred Morris going to get. And they took Dak away and they took everything else away. So I want to run it back. Well, they're going to be a little scared of, you, you know what I'm saying? And couple that guy with, with, with Zeke. And if he has some hands, it will be even better. So I want a quarterback quarterback between rounds four and seven running back also between rounds four and seven later on in the draft nothing early for sure um wide receiver kind of the same thing from I want two well three wide three wide receiver slash tight end so it could be two wide receivers and one tight end or one wide receiver and two tight ends or whatever but we need tight end and we need wide receiver we need more targets for that and then also that would bring in competition for um, Ter T Terrence Williams, uh, Cole Beasley, Ryan Switzer, all those guys, and we'll let the cream rise to the top. Because I'm telling you, if I'm a fifth round draft pick wide receiver coming into the Dallas Cowboys receiving squad, I'm going to feel like I have a chance. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to bust my behind because I'm going to feel like I have a chance. If I'm a third rounder, I'm going to really feel like I have a chance. And that's hope. And I, and I said that on my video, the last video. If we get our first wide receiver 
by the third round, if we can hold off, kind of like we did with defensive backs, because you was like me. We were like, oh, we need defensive backs. We need defensive backs. We were freaking out early, and the Cowboys just waited and waited and waited because the defensive backs were, were so deep. They waited, and we got Cheeto. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's just we can do that same thing on, on wide receiver, and we can load up on the positions that we really, 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 really need right now and then get start with wide receiver between rounds three to seven and get some quality guys in here to get some competition in our wide receiver room. That's what I want. Um, one offensive lineman, one very good offensive lineman, because I do not believe that in the later portion of the round you could get an offensive lineman for one that's ready to play, and we need one that's ready to play. Uh, and two, it's going to be a, mainly a project, you know, if you get someone later in, in, in the draft. So I want an offensive lineman, and I want an offensive lineman very early. I want a very good offensive lineman. Um, defensive lineman, I want a defensive lineman. I don't know if it's defensive end or defensive tackle. You know, we can use a pass rusher. We can use a t- defensive t- tackle, a, a three technique. There's a lot of stuff that we can, we can, we can use as far as the defense and, and that front seven, the upper front seven. As far as linebackers, well, let me just say I want three front seven members, either two defensive line and one linebacker or two linebackers and one defensive line. But um, we can't, we can use one really good linebacker just for insurance with Sean Lee and Jalen Smith and to go uh, as that third linebacker or whatever to, to um, provide some competition there. But um, just three members of that front seven I want in this draft. And then for defensive back, I think we just need one. I think we just need one, maybe one guy to add to the ones we did last, last year, and that should give us the 10 picks. Now, now, let me give you my top 10 picks of what we should do tonight, of how, the, how I think the draft is going to fall tonight. Now, the number one guy on my list is Mike McGlitchie, offensive tackle. And let me tell you why I feel like we need offensive tackle more than anything else in this draft. Um, I don't believe Cameron Fleming is the, the, the answer for us in, on, on the on right, at right tackle. Um, I think they, they want Collins at guard. So Collins will be at guard, and we need to shore up that tackle position. I believe in Cameron Fleming as a swing tackle. You know what I'm saying? And, and as a backup that can come in and play some football for us if and when Tyron, because I'm not, I'm not uh, good with Tyron's back right now. So if he needs to take a couple of games out, then whoever we get on a draft is not going to help keep Dak safe. You know what I'm saying? Last year when Tyron was out and, and Zeke was out, we let an average defensive end murder our quarterback. We, uh, what, eight sacks, eight, nine sacks, I can't remember right now. But we let him murder our quarterback. So, therefore, that shut down everything. That shut down any passing game. You wanted to blame Dez, you want to blame Dak. Neither one could do anything because they had no time to do anything. Dez didn't have time to get over. Dak didn't have time to hit him. So, if we don't have a, a quality def- offensive tackle on the other side, when Tyron is out, can slip to the left side, and we can have Cameron Fleming on, on the right side, and we can keep that, this train moving because we are a football team that is driven by its offensive line. If we do not have our offensive line, like last year, we can have four or three solid spots in that line, uh, offensive line. It really doesn't matter because they will expose us through our weak links. You understand what I'm saying? So if, we're, if, if the offensive line is going to be our strength, and we need to keep it strong, and we need to keep, 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 it, keep it full. And I'm really, really, really worried about Tyron. I really am. Um, number two on my board, if you thought McClitch, McClitch I, can, I might be saying his name wrong, he might not be there. A lot of these guys I'm saying right now probably won't be there, but who knows because when you look at um, pro football focus, you have a top 50 this, this list. You look at Mayock, you got a top 50 list, it's this list. And if, I guess for sure, if you go to the GMs of each team, everything is just different, especially nowadays because you don't know what teams are looking for. If they're more statistically based or more uh, um, film based or combat, what, whatever they are, it's, it's, it's all over the place. So we don't know what might happen. Um, number two, if he's there, Vitave. 
He's that, he's that Samoan that I always, I don't know if he's Samoan, but he's that big guy <laughs> that I always wanted in the defense. I thought we had it with Paya, but uh, uh, he didn't pan out. But if we get this guy, I'll be overly happy. The, uh, the third guy who's dropping, I, we, I didn't think we had a chance this guy at first, but Tremaine Edwards, he's dropping down and he has monstrous ability and he's very young. He might be my first pick in my draft, Madden League. Um, number five, um, defensive end Harold Landry. I like this. This is heat. This is pure heat at defensive end. This is not like we had defensive end last week. You, Taco, I understand that. But Taco making him been moving inside the defensive tackle. We can let David Irvin go where he's going to go. And uh, we can have pure heat coming on the other side of Lawrence. Or next year, if this guy has a killer rookie season, we can tell Lawrence, hey, man, you <laughs> look, man, we got somebody that can rush your pants. You need to go get that money somewhere else so we can pay offensive line. You know what I'm saying? So it so getting the pro, a quality pass rusher might help us out in a lot of ways, a whole lot of ways. So then Harold Landry is the next. Then um, another guy that's falling. I see him falling. I'm, I'm like, is Minka Fitz, Fitzpatrick? If Minka Fitzpatrick is there, that's the one rare defensive back that I would go up and get. Maybe a couple months because I didn't really scout defensive backs that much, but. If a defensive back stud like Minka Fitzpatrick drops to number 19, then we probably have no choice just to, because it's the be best player available. We'll have to scoop him up. But I'm keeping my eye on Minka. Um, at number six, back to the beast. You know, I'm keeping it really uh, offensive, defensive line based. Uh, Deron Payne, again, some force in the middle of, of the defense uh, to, to help stop the run. He's a huge person to help stop the run. Um, and then on offense, the, I know I said that about uh, offensive tackle, but that we need an offensive tackle because of Collins being at guard. But if we can, if, God, if, if Collins stays at tackle or uh, uh, plays right tackle, um, then Will Hernandez is a, is a road grader, you know, at offensive guard. So he can take that position uh, beside Tyron or wherever it is. I don't know where. But he can take that position. Yeah, it is beside Tyron. He can take that position and he can just he can he can kill with it. He can absolutely murder with it. And next, <laughs> offensive guard. And next, um, we have um, at number eight we have Leighton Vander Esch. Leighton Vander Esch. Um, don't hate me for putting him on my list. Um, I didn't I didn't want to put him on my list. One year wonder. I know. Uh, I, and then I almost took him off because I heard I heard something about a neck injury this morning or whatnot. So he might be off, but I hear he's high up on the Cowboys list, like way up there on the Cowboys list. And I wouldn't be upset if we got him. It'd be a great uh, Sean Lee replacement, a uh, Brian Erlacher, a big you know six four, six five ish linebacker or whatnot. Put him there in the middle, see what happens. <laughs> and uh, next one, another offensive tackle. I'm going back out to offensive tackle, um, and. Connor Williams. I don't know much about him, but another person, that's another person where I have to defer to the Cowboys organization because he's in Texas. I know they done uber research on him, but then guard, guard tackle, guard tackle. Is he a guard? Is he a tackle? That would still leave us, you know, in that. The cleanest thing is McClitchie. I don't see any other tackles that I really, really want because they're weak. They're, they're doing like uh, 24 bench press uh, reps and I can do that you know Orlando Brown did 14 man I, I can't we can't work with that <laughs> you know so, so the the one the cleanest offensive line to me is McClitchie but something about that Will Hernandez and Connor Williams I, I have to divert to the Cowboys organization for that one if he's if he's if he's uh if he's available and number 10 is going to be Marcus Davenport um, I, it's just, it's defensive line size, six, six freak athlete. Uh, I would, I would, I would, I would go in for that. All right. This is what I was looking for. I had, I, I, I brain farted on his name, but there's one last person that I'm, I'm very interested in is Maurice Hurst. I don't think first round because I think he's dropped severely because his heart condition. He, he didn't perform at the combine because of his heart, but the doctors cleared him at Michigan and the doctors cleared him at Harvard. So he should be okay, but I hear a lot of teams have taken him off the board. So keep an eye on Hurst because he is like perfect for Marinelli's defense. He's like a punch. 
You know, so keep an eye on him, and hopefully we can get him later on in the in in the um, the third, fourth, maybe rounds or what what whatnot, and he can be healthy for us or whatnot. But I'm sorry, this video is all over the place. I'm excited as excited can be. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna try to edit it. You probably get a few cuts. I don't care. But uh, I'll be here live tonight. I'm gonna start streaming a couple of hours before the draft. But I'll be up, and I'm, I'm as excited as can be, man. And I will rant on the Cleveland Browns if they do not draft Saquon Barkley. I will lose my mind if they don't draft Saquon Barkley. All right, holla. Peace.